Hello and welcome to our discussion of the case study Pharmacy Service Improvement at CVS, the first consumer value store, CVS, opened in Lowell, Massachusetts in 1963. The company grew quickly after that, both organically and by acquisition, and by 2002 CVS was one of America's largest retail drug stores, with over 4,000 stores and revenue of $24.2 billion over two-thirds of which was generated by the pharmacies. As the company grew, managers started to worry that pharmacy operations were not performing well. Anecdotes from both customers and employees indicated that many locations had serious problems with customer service. The company's pharmacy business, however, grew as quickly as the industry average. Some interpreted this to mean that CVS did not in fact have serious service problems. To understand the true state of pharmacy customer service and to make any required fixes, CVS launched the Pharmacy Service Initiative, short form PSI, and staffed it with operations executives and managers, including the Senior Vice President of Store Operations, the Director of Store Technology and the Director of Pharmacy Operations. Also on the team were a top pharmacy supervisor, a top pharmacist and consultants from the Boston Consulting Group. The PSI team began gathering information by analyzing historical data and interviewing current and former customers, as well as customers of other pharmacies. This work quickly confirmed that problems existed at CVS, even though customers believed that switching was difficult, deeper analyzes showed that many of them took their business elsewhere each year. CVS had 29.5 million pharmacy members at the start of 2000, a year in which total revenue for the corporation year was $20 billion. PSI team analyzes indicated that approximately 7.2 million regular pharmacy customers left CVS during the year. The total volume of filled prescriptions grew during 2000 because the company also attracted 8.5 million new regular members over the course of the year. But the PSI team's work clearly highlighted that customer defections were hampering growth. The regular customers who left in 2000 took with them an estimated 55 million annual prescriptions that, had they been filled by CVS, would have contributed $2.5 billion to revenue. Early interviews and analysis also revealed that different kinds of customers left for different reasons. The PSI team divided regular CVS pharmacy members into two categories. Light users, who filled an average of five scripts per year, were most likely to defect because of the pharmacy's location. Heavy users filled an average of 40 scripts a year and were most likely to leave because of poor service. This slide shows Exhibit 1 of the case study. This exhibit summarizes various problems that PSI team found. These problems were categorized according to the various steps involved in the process at CVS. PSI team members spent time in many CVS pharmacies. They systematically observed how prescriptions were filled or not filled. In addition to the comprehensive list of problems, as shown in Exhibit 1 earlier, they gathered other evidence that things were not working well. Approximately 1 in 4 scripts experienced a problem at some point in the fulfillment process. 16% of all scripts had problems that were still unresolved at customer pickup. This not only slowed down pickup for other customers but also made working at the pickup station a stressful and unpleasant job. During a single 8-hour shift observed by a PSI team member, 40% of customers voiced a complaint. The technician was asked 10 questions that he was not qualified to answer. The technician was also verbally abused four times. When PSI team asked the technician, he said that he felt he was responsible for none of the problems encountered by customers. He also felt that he could have done nothing to prevent them. The people working at pickup were the lowest paid, least trained people. However, they were expected to do something that was no fun and super difficult. They had to deal with angry customers all day. It was no surprise that a lot of these people left after less than a year on the job. The PSI team quickly realized that it was very hard to work effectively in CVS pharmacies. The few people who were working well, 
had either developed elaborate workarounds or were making heroic efforts or both, the PSI team found that virtually all CVS pharmacies followed the same multi-step process to fill prescriptions and experienced the same exceptions to it. The process consisted of five basic steps. The process is shown in Figure B of the case study. Step 1, Drop Off When a customer dropped off a script, a technician asked when they would return to pick it up. The technician wrote the requested pickup time on the script itself. The script was then put it in a box that was divided into a number of slots. Each slot was assigned to a specific time period for example 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., and so on. The technician put the script into the slot corresponding to the hour before the desired pickup time. If the customer wanted the prescription filled immediately, the technician put the script in the slot corresponding to the current time. Customers dropped off their prescriptions throughout the day. However, the busiest times at the drop-off window were before work, lunchtime, and after work. Regardless of when they dropped them off, more customers wanted to pick up their filled prescriptions after work than at any other time. Step 2, Data Entry Each hour, a technician took that hour's scripts from the box and entered all required data about them into the pharmacy information system. This information system was an application used by all locations and connected to CVS's central databases. These databases included information about drug, prescription, customer, payment, and insurance information. For each prescription, the required information included patient and doctor contact information, data about any third-party payers such as insurance companies or employers, the specifics of the prescription itself including education, dosage, number of doses, and so on. Drug Utilization Review As soon as data entry was complete, the system performed an automated drug utilization review, DUR. The DUR checked the script against all other prescriptions in the database for that patient. In other words, all prescription drugs that had ever been dispensed by CVS to the patient were checked to see if there existed any possibility for harmful drug-drug interactions. The DER also checked to make sure the drug was appropriate for the patient. If the DER revealed any potential problems, the systems came to a hard stop. When the hard stop occurred, the fulfillment could not proceed until the DER was reviewed by a pharmacist. In the great majority of cases the pharmacist did not need to involve the customer when reviewing the DER. Everyone at CVS felt that the DER was an essential part of good pharmacy operations and customer service. Insurance Check After the DER was complete and any hard stops were reviewed, the system performed an insurance check. Most CVS pharmacy customers had their prescriptions paid for by a third party. These third parties may include an employer, an insurance company, or a government agency. These customers paid only a small amount of their own money, called a co-payment, when they picked up their medicine. Payers had complicated rules about the drugs they would cover and the conditions under which they would pay for them. The insurance check verified that a script followed all of these rules. In most cases the fulfillment process would continue even if one of these rules was violated. CVS pharmacy employees would attempt to identify and correct the problem while the process continued or when the customer came to pick up their prescription, production. The drugs to fill the script were counted and verified by certified pharmacy technicians in the production area. The production area was near the shelves where medicine was stored. Quality Assurance, QA After production a pharmacist reviewed each script to make sure that it contained exactly the right drugs in the right quantities and that all other details were correct. Quality Assurance QA, was one of a pharmacist's most important tasks. Quality Assurance was never delegated to a technician or other employee in the pharmacy. The steps from data entry to QA could be completed in approximately 5 minutes if there were no problems. Pick up. After QA, each completed script was sealed in a bag. Bags were stored in the pickup area in alphabetical order. When customers arrived to pick up their prescriptions, the technician staffing the pickup window searched for the right prescription among the bags, 
verified customers' identities, and took any required payments from them. This is figure B which shows the basic flows for CVS prescription fulfillment process. This figure shows a simplified view of the basic flows for CVS prescription fulfillment process. Pickup window technicians also dealt with customers who did not get what they were expecting. The PSI team estimated that 16% of customers did not get what they were expecting. The team was even more disturbed to find that 27% of scripts encountered a substantial problem at some point in the fulfillment process. Drop-off The only substantial problem that arose at this step at drop-off step was an unmanned drop-off window. Issues were not common at this stage because nothing happened at drop-off. The customer just handed over a script and walked away while the technician filed it in the box according to pickup time, data entry. When the technician took scripts from the box and entered their details into the system, a number of problems could occur. First problem, no refill allowed, many scripts allowed the customer to refill the prescription at least once. Customers could lose track of how many refills were allowed. For any ineligible prescription, the system printed a label which was put in a doctor call bin. A technician would periodically take the contents of this bin and make phone calls or send faxes to doctor's offices. The purpose of these calls and faxes was to ask for doctor's approval to refill the prescription. If the technician reached the doctor immediately and the doctor approved the refill, the script proceeded to the next step in the process. If the doctor rejected the refill, the label was put in a doctor denied box near the pickup area. Customers learned about refill denials when they returned to pick up their prescriptions. If the technician could not reach the doctor immediately, the label was put in a doctor call back box. To resolve the no refill problems, technician needed 20 minutes to 3 days. The average time to resolve these issues was one day. No refill allowed scripts were 6% of total scripts. Second problem, DER hard stop. The DER generated a hard stop for 20% of all scripts. Over 90% of hard stops were resolved by pharmacists without involving the prescribing doctor. Pharmacists needed to perform a careful review before clearing the hard stop. This was done to ensure no medication was issued to customers that could harm them in a few cases, there is a serious potential problem with the script. The DER generated a hard stop and the pharmacist needed to call the doctor to resolve the potential problem. Third problem, insurance check, PSI team found that 17% of all scripts encountered a problem during the automated insurance check. The majority of these problems were easy to resolve. These problems could be due to date of birth errors on the script. Or a customer change change jobs or insurance company. Some errors of this type could be resolved by the data entry technician alone. Other problems required a phone call to the customer. The more difficult insurance problems were harder to resolve. These problems required a phone call to the insurance company and are the prescribing doctor. Scripts were filled even if insurance problems were not resolved. When this was the case, the customer was asked to pay the full amount of the prescription at pickup. Production and Quality Assurance The only problem identified at the production step was insufficient inventory to completely fill the script. 7% of scripts encountered partial or complete stock shortages of the required medicine. The PSI team did not find any issues with quality assurance. Pharmacists diligently and completely reviewed each filled script and made sure that the drugs dispensed were actually the ones prescribed, pick up. PSI team documented a variety of issues at the pickup window. The most common were Unpleasant customer surprises Unauthorized refills Scripts that had not been paid for by insurance Scripts that were simply not ready yet Some of these issues prevented fulfillment. When that happened, customers walked away from the pickup window without medicine and with a bad impression of CVS customer service. Even when problems could be fixed, the resolution process took a long time and increased wait time for other customers in line.
The situation at the pickup window was worst between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. This was the time when customers came after work to pick up the prescriptions. Most CVS locations found it difficult to have adequate staff at this time period. This was because pharmacy employees did not want to work during this time. The PSI team felt that they had a great deal of freedom to change pharmacy fulfillment operations. Their work was sponsored and supported by senior management. The CVS CEO Tom Ryan had stated that pharmacy service improvement was the most important corporate initiative for the coming year. PSI team knew that their recommended changes to tasks, responsibilities, and processes would carry much weight. They also knew that they could get information systems changed, if necessary. PSI team also realized that any changes they made could not compromise customer safety. We have already discussed the case in detail. This slide serves as a recap of what this case is all about. So let's review the important points of the case. In 2002, CVS assembled a team of operations executives and managers for its pharmacy service initiative. PSI. Although CVS was one of America's largest retail drug stores, problems in the company's prescription fulfillment process had caused significant customer defection, hampering the company's growth. The PSI aimed to streamline the fulfillment process. The fulfillment process had five steps. Step 1 The drop-off. Customers dropped off a prescription and a pharmacy technician placed it into a wooden box that represented the customer queue. Step 2 Data Entry, involved both an automated drug utilization review, DUR, which revealed any potential problems with the prescription, and an insurance check, which verified the amount of the patient's co-payment. Step 3 For the Production and Quality Assurance Drugs were counted and reviewed by a pharmacist to make sure that all the details of the prescription were correct. Step 5 The pickup step, bags were sealed and stored in the pickup area in alphabetical order where customers could pick them up after payment. Problems for the customer could occur at almost every step. For example, during the data entry process, problems with verifying insurance information might result in the customer being forced to pay the full price of a prescription at pickup. During production, insufficient inventory might prevent the prescription from being filled. The pickup step could also result in long wait times, especially if several customers in line had issues to resolve with their prescriptions. These service issues were among the problems that had caused an estimated 7.2 million regular pharmacy customers to leave CVS in 2000. In July 2002, PSI team was trying to design a new fulfillment process that would retain the safety and thoroughness of the old process, while improving customer satisfaction. The team also wondered how its proposed changes might be received by CVS and its pharmacies. Improving pharmacy fulfillment will significantly improve CVS's revenue, profits, and growth rates. The PSI effort, far from being peripheral, is core to the company. In order to strengthen the argument, you are required to calculate the percentages of light and heavy defectors to see their impact on CVS bottom line. Problems with the CVS's current pharmacy fulfillment process can be summarized as follows. Exceptions are identified too late in the process. CVS is giving up on the opportunity to involve customers in exception handling and problem resolution. The reason why would you design a process like this? Is that CVS's process was designed when the prescription fulfillment environment was much less complex than it was in 2002. The answer to the question so what IT-based capabilities does CVS need at this point in time? is that CVS needs to redesign its pharmacy fulfillment process and standardize it across its thousands of retail locations. Okay, so what could be the newly redesigned process? Well, there are a couple of options CVS can take. First, they can move data entry to drop off. Second, they can make the insurance check the first step. Third, they can move the dirt to QA. This is an important question. Complements The new process apparently requires very few new complements. Interdependence is not greatly increased. Pharmacy employees were already highly interdependent, 
data is already consistent, and decision rights are not at all reallocated by the new process. It seems that the only novel complement is a changed workflow. Following are some suggested assignment questions that you should be able to answer after the detailed discussion of the case.